Hey everybody, Denise with Lazy K Mountain Homestead. Well, today we are going to make Christmas jam. And I had uh, someone ask me if I made any jams or jellies for the holidays to sell. And that's one thing I, I do make. I also make the uh, apple pie filling jam <laughs> or apple pie jam. And I made it this year um, with cranberries in it and just with the apple pie filling um, it's not apple pie filling, but that's what it's called. Apple pie filling jam. It's really yummy. So if you love apple pie filling, you got to try that. I've got a video already up for that. Uh, but today we're going to make this Christmas jam and it just, uh, is really nice. It's festive. It's, uh, beautiful. And I couldn't say any more about it. If you like old fashioned Christmas flavors, you will love this jam. So... It has uh, cranberries in it. It has either cherries or strawberries in it, and it does have an orange in it. Um, so you're going to want to have those um, around. I couldn't find whole or frozen cranberries, so what I did was I found uh, dried cranberries at the Mennonites, 16-ounce packs. So I had to have 12 ounces for this recipe, so I went ahead and uh, measured out 12 ounces of dried cranberries, and I poured two cups of hot water onto it and into a bowl and I let it reconstitute itself and it took uh, overnight for that so they were nice and plump and I couldn't use them that day so I just popped them in the freezer so voila I had frozen cranberries <laughs> and they taste wonderful. Uh, what I wanted to show you is what I'm going to use. I had to order some jelly jars on Amazon and I'm really pleased with this order. A lot of times you know you never know with canning supplies online but this is called skosh i remember the word skosh was like means a little but anyways that is what this brand is called skosh mason jars s-k-o-c-h-e but they're really nice they've got the diamond cut and they've got a little place there and they even came with labels so they came with lids and rings and everything looks good. So I'm going to go ahead and use these for my jam. Of course, I'm going to go ahead and sterilize and wash and rinse and sterilize them. I'll put these in boiling water so they will be clean and ready to go. But I got these uh, for tw uh, 24 of them for $35. So I didn't think that was too bad. The prices of everything is outrageous. And this was just a little over a dollar a piece. So pretty happy with that. So anyways, I'm going to go ahead and um, get these jars ready. And in the meantime, I found um, char listen to me, dark red cherries. And you're going to need uh, one pound or a 16 ounce bag. And they recommended frozen, so I found these at Walmart. So I'm going to let these thaw out. And in another uh, batch, I'm going to make it with cranberry and strawberries. And I found the 16 ounces of strawberries at Walmart. And I'm going to let them thaw out. I've already got my cranberries over here. Like I said, reconstituted. They're in the double bags. I didn't want them to leak. So they're ready to go. And as soon as I've got all my stuff together, I'll be back. And we will put these uh, this Christmas jam together. I'm just going to do one recipe uh, with the cherries. But as I go along, you know, if you want to do strawberries and you don't like cherries... Um, you can just do the strawberries with this or the cherries with that. I thought those were two really yummy combinations. Um, you could do blueberries too. Um, it's really almost whatever you like with uh, cranberries. So anyways, I'll be back in a little bit. Hey y'all, I'm back. Um, this is actually the next day. <laughs> Not for you though, but I had to go get a puppy for Willis. Um, he wanted a little beagle, and I saw one on uh, on our local shopping network, and I went and got her, and we named her Duchess, so she is over in little kennel here in the house, sleeping, so just fair warning, if she starts to cry a little bit, I'll have to pause the video. So far, she's been super good. She's 12 weeks old. And she's so smart. She's learning things already. Just not even 24 hours later. So let's get back to our, our um, video here and our recipe. 
I'm making Christmas jam and I have uh, cranberries and like I said yesterday I couldn't find fresh or frozen so I went to my local uh, Mennonites and you can probably find these in any store but these are dried cranberries and I measured them out on my kitchen scale 12 ounces and I reconstituted them with boiling hot water I just put them in a bowl and pour two cups of boiling hot water onto 12 ounces of these uh, cranberries that were dried. I'm going to remeasure them uh, before I put them in this. So just to make sure I do have 12 ounces or if I'm over, I'm not quite sure. And then I've got cherries, dark red cherries here. Got them at Walmart. 16 ounces is what the recipe calls for. And that's what that looks like. And uh, the recipe also says you can use strawberries. And like I said yesterday, any fruit I think would uh, really go good as long as you like the combination with your cranberries. So like blueberries or peaches or raspberries, anything I think would go really good. Okay, so what we have to do is, I've got my uh, food processor out. You can use a blender. Uh, we're going to coarsely chop in the food processor. So I will use that. And I've got my recipe here. What we need to do first is measure out our cranberries. So let me go ahead and do that. I measure it right here in my food processor bowl. Now, if you do this, guys, make sure that you uh, zero it out once you put your the weight of this on your scale. So I'm going to zero it out, and I am going to ladle into there. Uh, let me see. I'll just go ahead and use this. How about that great spoon I got at Hobby Lobby? Just loved it. So I'm going to use that. I want juice too. So we're going to go for 12 ounces here of the cranberries. Oh, and I have a lot. Okay, well, that's great. All right. Make sure it's on ounces. And my hands are clean, so don't break. <laughs> okay, this would be a really great um, jam for Christmas presents, and uh, like I said, I have some people that want to buy it from me, so it's one of the reasons I'm making a lot of the recipe. Let me go ahead and put just uh, some over this. I don't know about you guys, but here it is a couple weeks before Thanksgiving in Tennessee, and we having a, a fly problem, so it's really kind of freaking me out. Okay, so that's 12 ounces of cranberries, and I need the 16 ounces of cherries, but before that, I have to peel an orange. I'm using tangerines. This is tangerines or oranges or tangelos, whatever you can get your hands on, and it wanted a large orange so I'm going to just go ahead and zest this first because you do need the zest of your orange and I'm going to go ahead and use both of these tangerines I looked for some navel oranges and I'll be quite honest I could find them but they didn't look that great this time of year it's uh, not quite ready for the citrus fruit here in the United States, at least on what we usually get from Florida. So just using these. Boy, they sure smell good. I don't know about you guys, but for me, the smell of citrus fruit around the holidays brings back such wonderful memories. Just yummy. And that's one of the reasons I like this recipe, because it has citrus in it. And it's got the cranberries and the cherries. And it's just a real festive Christmas jam. Okay, let me do this one. Now, you remember when you're zesting, you don't want to get the white of the, uh, the peel. That's called the pith. And that can be bitter, especially if it gets cooked. I mean, it's not a big, huge deal. But if you can avoid it, that's best. Okay. All right, there we go. Now, tangerines usually have a lot of uh, seeds, so I'm going to have to uh, peel that and kind of look for the seeds before I put it in there. 
with my cranberries. And they do need to be coarsely chopped. I'm trying to get it to where I can open this up. There we go. Usually, tangerines are pretty easy to peel. There we go. Just had to find a spot. And these peelings, you guys can dry them and use them in potpourri. You don't have to just throw them away. Dried peels, citrus peels are just so wonderful in the flower arrangements and things like that because uh, dried flower arrangements because the scent comes out. I have dried them in my dehydrator and I've sprinkled cinnamon on them and they, it just makes the whole house smell wonderful. Okay. Let's see what kind of seeds we've got in here. Okay, let me see a couple. So I'm just going to go ahead and you just take, take your uh, orange or your tangerine and you go ahead and you just put it in there like this, the whole pieces. So far, I've done pretty good with the, uh, you can feel right there where there would be seeds. And so far, so good. That's pretty neat. Okay, I'm, I'm really surprised there isn't a whole lot of seeds in this tangerine. Pretty cool. I know I keep saying that, but it is. I was a little worried when that was all I could find. So let's peel this one. And like I said, I'm using two small tangerines uh, instead of one large navel orange. I don't know if you'd want to use lemon in this uh, unless it would be a, like a Meyer lemon, which is a little bit milder lemon. It might be just a little bit too tart for your uh, cranberry and your cherry combination. So I wouldn't use a lemon. Or a lime, but tangelos or um, anything that is crossed with an orange, I think you would be fine to use. And these tangerines are really nice. All right, let's see if we get lucky with this one and not have any seeds. Won't that be great? All right, and you want to not have any of the, you know, if there's any white, like any of the strings, you don't want to put that in there but you are chopping the citrus. Okay. Wow, this is great so far. And I am separating each one of them just to check for seeds because you don't want to have a, a seedy jam. I mean, I know we're used to it with like raspberries and, and things like that, but not citrus. All right. So we're gonna go ahead and put the lid here on our food processor. And I'm gonna go ahead and just pulse this, finely chop, pulse the chop I mean. Well, let's see. Uh. And you will have to chop it. chopped and not have any whole stringy pieces in there. Okay, that looks good to me. I'm going to just go ahead and go in there with my spoon and just make sure that there aren't any pieces that I'm not super happy with. I'm going to go ahead and just turn on a little bit more. <laughs> And add our cherries, 16 ounces of cherries. These were frozen and they are pitted. And we're going to add the zest of our tangerine. All of that right there. There you go. I think you can see it better that way. Okay. And then we are going to add our spices. 
after we get all of this done, we are going to uh, cook it, you know, because we are making a jam. So we'll have to, you know, add the sugar in the pectin, just like you would if you were making normal jam. You have to go with that recipe and rule of thumb. Okay, so the recipe calls for cinnamon, allspice, and ground cloves. So these are really strong. Um wonderful Christmas flavors. I didn't have any allspice ground, but I did find the berries and I ground them up in my little grinder, so you can do that. I don't normally keep allspice on hand because I don't use it for a lot, but that's what this called for. Okay, so what we are going to do here is we are going to have a quarter teaspoon of each one of these spices. So, that's one fourth. So, there's the allspice the ground cloves and the ground cinnamon. Normally I would go a little heavy on the spices but since I've got ground cloves and ground um, allspice and they're pretty strong you'll see when you make it that you probably don't want to uh, go any uh, more heavier on these spices. Okay so we're going to go ahead and mix all of this again because you want your cherries chopped up. That's probably pretty good. Oh yeah. And I'm going to go ahead and in there with my spoon and just make sure everything looks good. I may go ahead and do a little bit more. This is kind of messy. My food processor is food processor is an old one. Sometimes it leaks a little, so you have to forgive the mess. All right. There we go. I'll probably do a new one, but I hate to not use this because it has sentimental value. Okay, so now we're going to go ahead and we're going to transfer all of this in the food processor to a pot. And I like to use a, a stew pot or a stock pot, whatever you want to call it, a heavy bottomed pot because they tend to not scorch as much as a, a lighter or thinner um, pot would be. So we're just going to go ahead and put that in here. All right. It really looks good. And I am going to go ahead and move my tripod over to the stove. So we'll be right back. Okay, here we are over at the stove. I have got our fruit mixture on the stove. And I have it on medium. And I want to bring it to a boil, a full rolling boil, which means you cannot stir it down with your, your spoon. And then we're going to add, right now we're going to add a half a cup of water doesn't matter room temperature is fine and mix that in here add one box of a sure gel or mrs. wagers or whatever powdered pectin that you have one whole box and that is 1.75 ounces now my recipe doesn't tell me how many jars I need but I've got eight of the half pints and they have, they are sterilized, washed, sterilized, dried, and then I fill them with scalding hot water. So they are once again ready. So we're going to go ahead and let that come to a full rolling boil. I've got everything else ready. I've got my, my stock pot or my um, water bath canner because you can use either as long as you can have enough water in there for an inch over your jars. And so something like this would work too. You could probably get maybe six jars in there, as long as you can have an inch of water over it and it can boil and process, you can use a stock pot. I have the um, water bath canner. I've got that ready. I've got my, my little um, magnet thing that I just love so much because I can get my lids and rings out of the hot water because I'm still one that likes to warm up the rings and the lids before I put them on. And I've got my tongs, canning tongs, everything's ready. And I also have paper towel over here 
for me to wipe the, the uh, rims before I do put the lids on. So all of that's ready. We are just going to wait until this is uh, rolling boiled. Then we'll add the sugar and we will proceed from there. So I'll be back in a few. All right, we have brought it to a rolling boil and that means you cannot stir it down. Let me see if I can bring that over so you can kind of see what I'm talking about. There, see I can't stir it down. All right, so we are gonna go ahead and add four cups of sugar. I already have measured out and you always wanna have your stuff pre-measured out uh, when you're making jams or jellies because it's a fast process and it really does help to have everything sitting there ready to go. Okay, so we are gonna go ahead and stir this. Stirring all that. I did um, up the temp a little bit from medium high to almost high because it was taking so long and I didn't want it to scorch. So now we've got the sugar in here and it's all nicely melted in there. And now we are gonna go ahead and bring this to a full rolling boil. And as soon as it does come to the full rolling boil, which means you can't stir it down, we're gonna time one minute. And that's really important. You don't wanna go over that using pectin because you can um, kind of ruin the pectin in there. If you're making uh, jams and jellies the old fashioned way where you don't use powdered pectin or liquid pectin, you're using the natural pectin from the uh, fruit itself, then you use a different method, which um, I do have a video on that for grape jelly, which is quite a few years ago, but I, I do have one. Okay, it's coming to a boil, not a full rolling boil yet. And we've got everything ready over here because as soon as we get this and time it for one minute, we are gonna take it off the heat. If there's any foam on there, you can skim the foam off or some people put a pat of butter on there and just kind of mix it around and that will deflate your foam. I usually just um, skim it off. I don't, I don't need to use the butter. I have before and it does work pretty good. And remember, you don't want to splatter this like I just did because it's molten lava and you don't want it on your skin. All right, so let's see here. Let me get another tea towel. I always like to have plenty of tea towels here when I'm working with my canning stuff. And I did kind of have a little taste of this jam. And boy, it's so good with the cherries. I have made it with strawberries before and I do love cherries. So when I saw that, I thought, yeah, we're going to go ahead and do that. I've got my jars ready. Okay, we are at a rolling boil. I'm going to go ahead and time this for one minute. And we will be back. Okay, it's been one minute. I've removed the jam from the uh, eye and I went ahead and moved my uh, water bath canner over because I have a large eye here. And we're gonna go ahead and fill our jars and the recipe says a quarter inch head space. So that's about that much that we will leave. And I've got hardly any foam in here, so that's fine. And we're going to go ahead and fill these up to a quarter inch. All right, that looks so good. This is just so beautiful. Let me see if I can get that. You guys can see what I'm doing. And if you see any dirty dishes, sorry. They're just from me doing this recipe. So beautiful. Oh, the kitchen smells so good just like an old-fashioned Christmas in here. Wow. I'm trying to be pretty careful here so I don't have to 
have too much to wipe off the rims with the sticky. Sometimes it's a, a challenge to get it off of there, but I think we'll be okay. That one needs a little bit more. And sometimes when you're uh, making a fruit jelly or jam like this, well, I guess jam or preserves because you've got the pieces of fruit and sometimes you've got whole pieces of fruit. Uh, the fruit may kind of, after it's cooling and curing, uh, it's going to float to the top kind of, make its way up there. What you can do and uh, what I was always taught was flip your jelly jars over halfway through the uh, curing process, which is about 24 hours for this. Okay, we have just a teeny tiny bit. I'm just going to fill the ones that I think that I didn't have enough to make a quarter. And it did, uh, let me see, two, four, six, seven jars. Okay, that's kind of an odd number, isn't it? <laughs> all right, and I think this little guy here could probably do some. All right, and that's that. All right, look how pretty that is. Isn't that gorgeous? My gosh, look, look at the color on that. Mm. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is go ahead and wipe, dip that in my warm water, and I'm just going to wipe each one of these, and if there's any sticky that's around the part where I would put the, let me move that one out of the way, where I'd put the ring, I'm going to go ahead and wipe that too, because you don't want anything to inhibit your sealing. That's why we do this part. And these are new jars, and I did already inspect them for uh, any chips or cracks prior to filling them up with water and washing them. Okay, so they're pretty good. So I wanted to show you, see, there was some of that on there. So that's what we're taking off. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and get all my lids. Kinda don't have enough room. Can't wait to get my new cabinets. I've been saving up for my new cabinet, so hopefully by January we will start that process of a new whole cabinet set in here. I've been wanting that for quite a while because I was just going to paint these and they're in such bad shape. We just decided to go ahead and get um, some oak cabinets. Now these are hot, so remember that when you put your your lids on and your rings so you don't accidentally drop it. All right, each one of these gets rings, put it back in here, and you just want to hand tighten. Like I always say, you're not going to tighten for all your worth because canning is a process that's contracting and expanding. So. If you uh, do tighten for all your worth, a lot of times that can cause jars to explode or crack. I was talking to Willis one time and he said his grandpa used to come in there and tighten all the jars so tight you couldn't get them off. And they had a lot of cracked jars inside the canners and that's one of the reasons that I mean because I can understand you're wanting to do that so okay so I need to make sure I have an inch of water over these so I'm going to pour this water I've got here and that is going to give me an inch over that and we are going to go ahead and turn this on high we're going to bring it to a rolling boil a lot of that going on here <laughs> and at that time, we are going to time it for 10 minutes, I believe. Yep. Water bath canner for 10 minutes. Then we'll let it rest for 10 minutes, and we'll pull them out, and then we will let them cool for 24 hours. So I'll be back when we do that step. Okay, guys? See you in a few. 
Hey everybody, well it's done. How pretty is that? Really deep, deep burgundy. I have a little bit over here that was left over and I just wanted to show you. I did not uh, boil and water bath this. I'm just going to use it. There it is. Look at that. Look how nice that set up. Beautiful. I can't wait to have it on my toast. Well, somebody's pinging already. <laughs> That's always a good sign. So, and the smell. And see, it is kind of chunky. You can see a little cherry there. So, I hope you give this uh, recipe a try. I think it'll be wonderful on a scone or toast or a hot biscuit. Oh my gosh, I can't wait till Willis gets home so we can try this. Well, they're all pinging. That's great. We, I hope you'll like, share, and subscribe. You have a great day, and I'll be back soon with some more videos and recipes. Bye!